Yesterday we learned that if you're trying to find the probability of one event or another event happening, you add the two probabilities together. So with probability, the word or means add the probabilities together. The word and, if you want to find the probability that A and B will occur, you need to multiply the probabilities together. So and means multiply them together. Two cards are randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that it's an ace and a face card with replacement and then without replacement? And we'll explain in a minute what without replacement means. With replacement means I've got 52 cards in my hand. I'm going to pull a card out. We're going to write down what it is. I stick it back in the deck, shuffle the cards, we take those same 52 cards, we pull out another card, we write down what it is. So every time we do this, we will have 52 cards that we are choosing from. So with replacement, first we want to do ace, then we want to do face card. How many aces are in the deck? Four aces out of 52. The word and with probability means we are going to multiply these numbers together. Face card. How many face cards are in the deck? 12 out of 52. There's a couple ways that you can plug this into your calculator depending on what the directions say about how your answer should be. Sometimes the directions will say leave your answer as a simplified fraction. If you do not know how to simplify a fraction on your calculator, you need to bring your calculator to me and let me teach you. Or if you are one of those people who swears that you have a calculator, but I never see it in class and you always borrow a calculator from me, not that that would ever happen, but if you happen to borrow a graphing calculator and you don't know how to simplify a fraction on a graphing calculator, please bring me the graphing calculator and I will show you how to do it. So if the directions say leave your answer as a simplified fraction, make sure you do that. If the answer says to leave your answer as a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandth, make sure you do that. So read the directions, see how your answer should be. If we're going to leave our answer as a simplified fraction. On a scientific calculator, I would do parentheses 4 over 52, so use your ABC button, and then parentheses 12 ABC 52, and hit enter and let your calculator simplify it for you. On this calculator, if you'd like to use a simplified fraction, do parentheses 4 divided by 52, close your parentheses, times parentheses, 12 divided by 52, close your parentheses. If you hit enter right now, you'll see your answer as a decimal. If you want it to be a fraction, you can change it to a fraction, either now or after you have the decimal. So as a decimal, this is going to be 0 0.01775. As a fraction, this is 3 over 169. Okay, without replacement means I've got 52 cards in my hand. It'd be nice if I spelled replacement correctly. I have 52 cards in my hand. We pull a card out, record what it is, and then set it down on the desk. How many cards do I have left in my hand? 51. So we are not putting that card back. This means that when we do our fractions, the first card that we draw, we will have 52 total cards that we are choosing from. 
The second card that we draw, how many cards total are there? 51. So if we are not replacing the card, your denominator has to decrease because you have one less card each time that you're pulling from. Now for the numerators, we want an ace first. There are four aces in the deck. Then we want a face card. There are 12 face cards in the deck. You basically assume that you're getting what you want. So we're going to assume that when we pull out the ace, that we either pull out an ace or something else, but we're going to assume that the face cards were not affected. That's kind of the weird thing in probability. Basically, assume that you're getting what you want to get so that the other thing isn't affected. Does that make sense? Okay. So now, in your calculators, I would like you to do this multiplication, write this as both a fraction simplified and as a decimal. Two cards are randomly selected from a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability that it is a spade and a three with replacement and then without replacement? Now the issue here is that there's some overlap. There's a three of spades. So with replacement, let's do the spades like normal. There's 13 spades in the deck out of 52 cards. And the next card that we draw, we are, because we're replacing, we're still going to have 52 cards that we're pulling from, but now we have to think about the threes. Well, if we counted the three of spades in the 13, how many other threes are there in the deck? There's three other threes. So you can just subtract that out as you're doing this. Technically, what I'm supposed to tell you is that you're supposed to do four and then minus 1 over 52. But just think of it instead as, well, we're counting that 3 of spades in the 13 spades, so let's just consider the 3 remaining 3s that are in the deck. Hey, actually, because these are independent events, we don't have to do that three. With replacement, with replacement, there are still four threes in the deck. Okay. After discussion with my class, I have come to the conclusion that I am not going to put any problems on the test like this where there's overlap, okay? So let's change this problem so that it says, what is the probability that a spade and a diamond are selected with replacement? So with replacement, how many spades are in a standard deck of cards? 13 out of 52. How many diamonds are in a deck of cards? 13 out of 52. And for those of you who are gone yesterday, you're going to want to look back in the notes at where the, the cards are all laid out. So if you're not super familiar with a deck of cards, look at that chart. Multiply this out and please write this as a simplified fraction and as a decimal. Okay, without replacement, for the spades, there are 13 spades out of 52 cards. But then we take that spade out, we take that card out, we now have only 51 cards to choose from. There are 13 diamonds, supposedly, in those 51 cards. So now do this multiplication again using 13 over 52 times 13 over 51.
Now the reason I want you to write this both as a fraction and as a decimal partially is because you need to look at your directions to see which it's asking you for, so you need to know how to do both. But if you look at the fraction 1 16th and you look at the fraction 13 over 204, it's really difficult to compare those numbers. But when you look at 0 0.0625 and 0 0.0637, you can see that without replacement, you have a slightly better probability than you do with replacement. I mean, it's, it's still pretty negligible. It's, it's difficult to get this kind of a thing. Okay, number three, which is actually our last example today. I changed it to say, oops, it should say four cards, not three cards. See, I'm changing it wrong. That's awesome. Four cards are randomly selected. Basically, we are going to try to find the probability of selecting a four of a kind aces out of a deck with replacement and without replacement. So four cards are selected. What's the probability that you get an ace and an ace and an ace and an ace? Okay, with replacement, this is actually really, really easy because every time you replace those cards. So you've got 4 over 52 times 4 over 52 times 4 over 52 times 4 over 52. Before we calculate this, let's talk about without replacement, and then I'll let you calculate both of them. Without replacement, the first card, there are four potential aces in the deck of 52 cards total. We pull a card out and we set it down on the table. How many cards are left in the deck? 51. Now here's the kind of weird thing. So is everyone paying close attention? In probability, you're basically assuming that you get what you want. So now there would theoretically only be three aces left in the deck. We take that card out, we set it down. How many cards are left in the deck? 50. And how many theoretical aces are left in the deck? Two. And then for the last card, whoops, there are 49 cards left in the deck and only one theoretical ace left in the deck. So what I wanted to show you with this example is that in probability, you're basically assuming that you're getting what you want to get. So take a moment and do those calculations. I don't think your calculator will let you write this as a simplified fraction, so let's write these as decimals. Okay, so what happens when you plug this into your calculator and you get this weird, like, E whatever thing. It says E to the negative six or E to the negative fifth. That means scientific no notation. So with the without replacement, it's 3.6938 times 10 to the negative sixth. Now what does that mean? That means move your decimal to the left six places. So you move it left once and that gets it in front of the three and then however many more places. So in number three with replacement, it would be point zero 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 four zeros three five zero oh, one two eight whatever. Without replacement, it'd be point zero 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 zero. That's five zeros and then three six nine three eight. If you just want to write it in scientific notation, that's fine. Um, scientific notation. What this should tell you is that the green one times ten to the negative fifth is a bigger number than the blue one times 10 to the negative sixth. The other thing this should tell you is if someone bets you a million dollars that you can pull four aces out of a deck without replacement, you probably shouldn't do it because look at the probability. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen.